Well, this certainly doesn't look right. Um, we'll, uh, be right back. Oh, and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. Now everything is working correctly, so we can get started with this video. Um, first off, we're gonna have two parts of this video. And first, we're going to have Universe Sandbox 2 news, because, uh, they have actually released the second part to their roadmap, so we can see what they are adding. So, the first three things are all VR. They are going to be, oh, well, Alpha 19, new tutorials for the VR, and Oculus Touch support are coming. Um, and now, Alpha 21 and beyond, faster, stronger physics with more accuracy, um, second stage of planetary grids in detail, which basically makes it so that when you, like, hit certain parts of a world, it makes it a bit more detailed and it only affects a certain area on the planet instead of the whole thing. So you could have microclimates and stuff on planets, which I think is very, very neat. Next up, new sound effects. Oh, wow. I actually don't know what those are going to sound like, but you know, if it makes the video seem higher quality without me doing any work, that that's good. Um, they're redoing the galaxy system. They're adding total body fragmentation, which is pretty much when things get hit by an asteroid, or not really an asteroid, but something very large, like, let's say, another planet, or the moon, total fragmentation means that it will completely split into tons of fragments and obliterate itself instead of just absorbing the other planet. So, that just makes the game a whole lot more realistic. Um, then the third stage of planetary detail and stuff oh oh life simulation is written down under that so they said they don't know where it'll bring them but uh life simulation would make me very happy next up they said a global version which uh not global <laughs> mobile <laughs> mobile version yeah i don't know how that would work and i'm I'm a much bigger fan of PC gaming anyways, but if you were excited for that, then, um, yeah, that's apparently coming soon. Well, maybe not soon. Um, Steam Workshop and custom models for sharing different things. I could share Spook Vooper with all of you. A rigid body collision system. Um, which would basically mean instead of things like just merging, they would bump off of each other. Ooh, that would actually make uh, the those mega structures we used to have before they were uh, removed. That would make those work much, much better. Constellations. Atmospheric scattering. Oh, I need to get that working for voxel space. Okay, so... Uh, after that, spaceships pilotable spaceships probably a long way off <laughs> space mega structures procedurally generated surfaces so like more detail and stuff and that's that's all but that's a lot of stuff so we can hope to see those in the future so now that that little bit of news is done, if someone wants to kindly, like, put up... Oh, the actual video starts at 2 minutes and 34 seconds. If it's actually 2 minutes and 34 seconds, I will be really impressed. Um, but, if no one's going to do that, it is time for me to actually get on with the video. Which, if you didn't read the title, or don't know how to read, or are blind, um, it is... Terraforming a black hole. Now, we're going to add a little bit of a twist to this to make it less boring. Which is, we're going to have the black hole be orbiting another black hole. So we're going to have to use the gravity to heat up the planet, which is going to have to be very far away to not be ripped apart. Um, so we're going to do some testing with Earth. Before we put another black hole in. We need to find the exact spot where it won't get too cold, where the Roche limit will kick in just enough to keep the world warm. So, that isn't it. 
I'm hoping if the rush limit kicks in a little bit, it won't also rip it all apart. That is a possibility, though. So, we're at about negative 60, which isn't actually terrible. Um, well, I mean, for life it is, but for our purposes at the moment, we could expect it to be this bad. Um, so as long as Earth isn't being ripped apart, we're doing something kind of right. And as long as that's getting warmer, which it isn't, I feel like we're going to have to get a lot closer to this black hole. Which I don't like, because it's going to start ripping Earth apart. But it seems like we haven't hit that point yet. Still getting colder. Okay, so let's get really close. Like, really close. I think we're too close, but, you know, we can... We can see about it. It may or may not... Oh, shoot! Wait, we actually have a bit of success. We are at 70 degrees, not being ripped apart, which means we just have to pull Earth a little bit further away. And I may have went a little bit too far there. And let's see if this cools down as much as we need it to. Oh, Jesus, this is going to take forever. Let's just put it at 20 degrees and see what happens. Oh, it's getting colder than that. Okay, too much in a little bit. Auto orbit. Bam. In a little bit. Auto orbit. Bam. And we actually are. Oh, shoot. We are close. We are close to what we need, just a little bit further away. <sighs> We're getting so, so, so close to the temperature we want to be at, which is about Earth's temperature. I'll settle for like under 20, like 19, 18, which I think we're about to actually hit. Okay, good enough. So now you're probably realizing, wait, wait, this is Earth. This isn't a black hole you're terraforming. You're 100% right. And that is why we are now going to begin to actually terraform a black hole. Now that we know the position to put it in, we can delete Earth and add a black hole. at the exact same spot or at a close to exact same spot ah I've lost it oh there it is and now we can begin uh, terraforming it so first off we have to get rid of a bit of mass because way way too big so um we got to earth we want this to be like one. We can have this playing right now, it doesn't really affect anything. And we just shrink, shrink. Also, we need the density to be at something normal. Um. So let's figure out what a normal density is for the rock. Or we'll just use Earth as a baseline. So if we plop down a Earth, um, 5.51 grams per centimeter cubed is about what we want. So we'll actually do that right now. What we're going to have to do is when we change this, we have to lock mass. Yep, that's what we want to do. So we're just going to do five. That's going to make this really big, but that's exactly what we want. It's no longer actually a black hole. Oh, it is. Huh. Well, it's not going to be for much longer, considering we're ripping out all of its mass. There really shouldn't be a black hole right now, which is kind of startling. Um, oh. Shoot. 
I think it's just really small now. One, four, one, one, two, seven. Nope. That's not it. It's actually quite not dense. And it's just really big. So let's see if it actually becomes a normal planet. Um, huh. This is interesting. It really shouldn't be a black hole right now. It should now be a non-black hole. It should be a planet. Especially now that we're going into the Earth size. So we may have to slightly cheat here once we hit one Earth. I said there would be some cheating here because the game doesn't exactly allow you to uh, do everything imaginable. There's still things they have to add. But we're going to hit one Earth, and what we're going to do is we are going to actually cheat. Um, but the fact that we're actually having Earth, uh, or the planet orbit, a black hole makes up for that. We're just going to go random rocky planet, and we're going to put it in the exact same spot. And now we're going to terraform this. This is... Totally the black hole planet, which black hole. Nobody can tell the difference. Oh man, that got kind of loud for a second. Nobody can tell the difference between this and the black hole before. And let's see what happens. Now, I don't know how the heat's going to work because doing some simple thinking. Um, Come on, speed it up. Now, if you think about it, usually he comes from a star, and that's all good and great. Oh, shoot, we have to move this in. I think the only reason Earth was getting warm was because of its atmosphere, so let's give this an atmosphere so it doesn't lose its heat instantly. Um, and that's exactly what I was going to say. It's not just uh, absorbing heat and then getting it trapped in with the greenhouse gases. It's actually creating its own heat from the gravity and all of the stress within the planet, which makes this kind of challenging, actually. Our effective temperature is very, very, very low. So we're going to uh, fix that through a few means. Jeez, come on, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, there we go. We are pretty slow now. And we're just going to move this in. Just a tad. By just a tad, I mean quite a bit. Now we're going to auto-orbit and see what the temperature is like now. It appears that this is not causing much of a change. So we're going to go in closer. A lot closer. Now we're going to auto-orbit again. And we are still stuck at 270 degrees. Let's set this to one day. Actually, this is going really, really fast. Um, a year is very short here because the um, Michael it's orbiting is actually pretty small. Okay. So at this point, the planet is actually being ripped apart. Like, thoroughly ripped apart. Um, so we have to move it a little bit further away, I'm afraid. Like, is that going to work? No, that is not going to work. It's only 36 degrees, though, which is interesting. Um, we can keep attempting this until things get super laggy from all the particles. Oh, wow, even this is being ripped apart. Actually, maybe not. Nope. We are now actually at 34 degrees, and we are at a steady uh, size, which means we can... Move further out, figure out what temperature we want it to hit. And let's just put it to 
16 and see what happens. This is going at one day per second. We just need to get rid of all the lava and stuff on the planet, which is fading away now after it was ripped apart horribly. And there we go. So just in like one hour, we're going around and um, we're just going to, uh, can I actually, yeah, we can, we can delete these fragments if we really try. There we go. Eh, we got like half of them. I guess we could get all of them. Just gotta do that, and then do that. Bam. So, our planet is now at the point where it's being heated up by the black hole, but it's not actually being ripped apart by it. Interesting enough, the uh, temperature isn't changing from what I set it at, so it must just be staying stable where we've got it now. Um, which is actually good. Which That means that the atmosphere is doing its job, and we do actually have a chance of making this a livable planet. This is pretty much one Earth. I'm not going to mess with it at all there. Um... So, next up, what we want to do is we want to go to temperature. So, look at the effective temperature. <laughs> Absolute zero. Uh, we're going to keep all of this the same. We're going to go... Actually, this is all set already. We don't have much else to do other than add some water. Now we have these beautiful oceans and lakes and... The ocean isn't that big. Let's give it a little bit more. There we go. Now there's enough ocean. Oceans for everyone. And it's already actually kind of got a green tint to it, but that's because of the atmosphere. So we're just going to get the mid elevation. Or is it mostly low? I think mid will do it. And if we make this green. There we go. That looks great. So guys, we have went from a black hole to this, and not only that, but this is being supported by a black hole. So we kind of did two crazy things at the same time. So I think that's it, all it's going to be for this episode. So if you leave a like and subscribe, uh, more videos like this to come. If not, uh, crazy aliens will come to your house and abduct you, and um... If you do like and subscribe, you will get a vacation resort on this planet looking out into the deep void of space because there is no sun. Now that brings up a great question. Where the heck is the light on this side of the planet coming from? The world may never know.